1948 Hoffman AMFM Television Resurrection Part 2. In Part 1, we brought the radio, the AMFM radio, back to life. Uh, in this video, we will attempt to get the beautifully green, lime green, yellow television portion working. I will post a link to part one in the video description below. Pick this up on the side of the road. It originally had a turntable right there, phonograph. This is a beautifully built cabinet which unfortunately has been destroyed with beautiful brass plates and all the knobs are missing. The entire top of the cabinet is covered with a soft asbestos heat shield and there's quite a bit of the dust that's fallen off of this that's all over uh, the chassis and the CRT. The CRT is loose. So I'm treating this thing as hazmat. Uh, I'm not blowing it off or I'm not disturbing the dust. I'm working on it outside. We're going to start this video with a little quick review. We'll check the CRT again with a different tester than I used in part one just to verify it's got enough emission to even be worth attempting to get the chassis to work. In part one we resurrected the AM FM tuner section. Uh, what all that really turned out to be wrong with that was a, a case of silver mica disease with the B-plus basically arcing inside the IF can, so we hollowed the IF can out. I need to tack a couple hundred picofarads across the bottom of this just so it's sort of in working order. The AM and the FM are working. The FM, out of this little uh, tuner, injects into the first video IF of the TV set and feeds all the way through the video IF uh, into the television sound demodulation. The FM out of the small tuner assembly here comes out of this point and feeds into the first video IF cathode, into the second video IF, then up to the first sound IF, second sound IF, and it uses the television's ratio detector. So at least we know that this portion of the television's working. We don't know about the sweep circuits and those are usually the hard part. This can dome resistor went open in the first video. I went and picked up just a selection of parts. This uses a voltage divider network made up of two uh, 1650 ohm resistors course they didn't have 1650 ohm but what they did have was 820s so we'll put 220s we will put two 820s in series in place of this can dome this right here is one of those adjustable doily scoimlers and it's just getting way too hot because it's a 15k and I got it adjusted down so we're gonna put two of these in here I have just a bunch of general capacitor values 0 0.047, 0 0.1, 0 0.027, uh, 0 0.047 at 1600 volts. So, uh, what's this 473? That's 0 0.047, 0 0.1. So, what we're going to do is we're going to hopefully try and get the uh, television portion of this thing working, which is completely just loaded with crappy capacitors. But the first thing I want to do is uh, I also want to figure out what happened here. All of this is covered in part one. There is one capacitor I'm interested in, uh, which is this one right here, that point one. Any of these wax capacitors that are in the high voltage circuit. And this has got to be one of the most complex flyback deflection circuits I think I've ever seen. 
I mean, you just look at this thing. This is one super complex high voltage horizontal deflection circuit. I hope I can get it to work. Why am I wearing gloves? Well, uh, these things are hazmat. You can see like the asbestos hairs right there. And besides that, I got enough lead right here to melt down the future of Omega City. Uh, let's see, what is this? This is uh, old school solder. SN63PB37, so this is 631037 lead. I don't know what this is. And this is 6337. This is like a lower lead. I thought most solder was 6040. Anyway, there's 20 pounds here. As a resurrection, it's just about getting it to work, see if we can get it to play again and produce a picture bring it back to life um, so these parts I'm not trimming the leads or anything because I'm going to remove them when I'm done with this because I'm probably going to pull some parts off this chassis and then recycle it so this thing has had uh, a lot of work done on it as I covered in part one this thing has really had its share of trips to the shop during its life I, I've never seen where somebody wrote in pencil the uh, tube numbers. I mean this thing really has had a lot of work done on it. You can really see the little asbestos fibers here that have come down off that sheet. And the problem with these fibers is that on a microscopic level they're like little fish, fish hooks and they get embedded in your lung tissue and your lungs can't flush them out so they agitate your lungs and cause cancer it takes a lot of it and a lot of years of it but i still want to minimize it so looking at this the chassis and then looking at this is totally different this in the riders is a lot closer but it's still different so uh, I've, I don't have the right schematic. I've been all through this volume of the riders. And yeah, I, something's different. It would be nice to have the right schematic. I don't know. This thing is kind of a mashup between these two chassis. And um, I don't know. It's, it's, it's close to... Elements of it, it's, I think it's closer to a 153 than a 157, at least looking at the values and the way things are connected. So it looks like it's a lot closer to the 153, but what a, what a bunch of hacked in repairs. You can see a bunch of resistors have been changed. A bunch of parts have been changed. Like... That right there, yellow, orange, orange, that's supposed to be a 47, not a 43. And that one right there um, is 3K, right? Uh, 3000, zero, 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 3, it's supposed to be a 3.3. So this thing has had just loaded with hacked repairs. But yeah, I think this, this schematic is going to be close enough to get us to work. So even though it might be annoying for those with a short attention span, there's absolutely nothing wrong with taking your time and doing your research before you dig into one of these, even if it is just trash off the side of the road. Um, I know I tested this in the first video, but I want to double check. And that is actually knowing this tester. That is actually marginally acceptable. 
a new one would be over here at, you know, above the D on good, but this will produce enough of an image for us to resurrect, and that's all that matters. Maybe just to get a third opinion here, since we did the Beltron in the first video, and we did the, uh, whatever that other one was, the B and K, so we'll go up to 6.3 volts. And shorts, no, shorts, no, gun balance, which is the same as cutoff. And emissions. Yeah, you know, I, I tend to believe the B and K a little bit more accurately. It's, it's, it's going to be somewhere in the marginal. It's not going to be like this. This is, you know, it's about getting used to your test equipment and comparing it to a variety of tubes and you know. You know, this black mark I put right there, that's a brand new CRT. So, yeah, it's, I would put it more down in the middle. I did put 200 picofarads on the AM just so the FM would work. We are back on our dim bulb, um, just double checking and testing, we're on FM. Hi, this is Derek Van Nuen of Honda, and our Happy Honda Day sales event gets even better with our Black Friday specials now through December. Of course, this here is a 6AL5 dual diode ratio detector for both television and uh, FM. So, like I said, it's using the television IF strip and sound detector demodulator. Uh, so, this thing is a standalone unit, will not stand alone and work. It needs. Um, it needs the whole TV. Okay, I uh, uh, I hooked it up to the speaker that's in the cabinet. So you're listening to this speaker now. It's not very loud. It's kind of lacking gain. I would think it would bump. I mean, I would expect it to, you know, it's not. Remember all I, it's okay. It's time for you to get the Royals treatment from Lord. Neither have I. I'm still on this too for safety. So there's channel six. And I can actually tweak it down so low it picks up K Jazz. It actually sounds really clean. I'll give it that. It sounds clean. Pulled a couple of these capacitors out of circuit, and um, yeah, they're they're leaky. That's 50 volts. So, um, that's not a good thing. I'd rather not recap to resurrect, because there are a lot of them. So I hear this noise, 
I'm trying to figure out what the hell is going on. A few quick updates. I finally located the right chassis by matching the circuit I see to the schematic. It's in, it's in Rider Television Manual uh, Volume 5, and it is the chassis is uh, a 152. This is the correct chassis. And reading this, um, looks like I might have made a mistake, although, however, I might not have damaged it. But they talk about the um, an AC interlock connection is made through the focus and deflection cable so that the chassis cannot be turned on when the focus coil is disconnected. Well, I kind of bypassed that, didn't I? Uh, operation without the focus coil and the circuit would burn out the focus control potentiometer. So that makes sense. Uh, I don't know if I burned out that potentiometer because I pulled the fuse for the horizontal output and the majority of tubes out. Also there are several 6SN7 tubes missing here. So we're going to go through and uh, test a bunch and get ready. But yes it is this TV that we're working on is a chassis 152 and I could probably zoom in on that and there it is when it was brand new with the radio tuner in video part one on this Hoffman TV I went to grab my FLIR infrared camera to do some thermal diagnostics when we were fixing the radio and it didn't work and I tried resetting it and I couldn't get it to work and it was I've had it for about two years and I really only use it for doing these videos and diagnostics on this stuff well I'm happy to report that FLIR stood by their product and after some communication with them filling out forms and stuff they fully warrant warranted they fully warranted the little FLIR 1 Pro camera so we have a new infrared camera to continue diagnosing if we need it for the TV part of this. So we're going to go through now and we're going to test some 6SN7s. There were several of these missing out of the chassis. These are um, a dual triode, a lot like a 12AX7. And I've already got the tube tester here set up to test them, so we're just popping them in, uh, letting them warm up, and then testing them. And I'm going to be writing on the base with a, either an oil marker or a xylene marker the value of the two triodes. These don't have to be that high anything above about 45 is good according to the uh, manual so that one's a little bit on the weak side and you can tell by the filament burn off these marks here that's tungsten evaporation from the tube being used so the higher hours and you can see that some of them have more burn off on one cathode than the other. So, so this one was like uh, 30 and 30. So we'll just write that on here 30 and 30. So I'll just note it right there. That one's a little bit happier, isn't it? 40 and 40, that one's good. That one will work. I guess I should be checking them for leakage too. That one's workable. No leakage. Telly King.
35 and 40 no leakage and that's weird because that one has no filament burn off at all although it's coming up see this one has no uh, it's an RCA okay here's one out of the TV let's see nice and dirty uh, let's see how this one tests this TV uses a lot of these 6SN7s, probably like five or six of them. It's just a dual triode, like a 12AX7. I think it's kind of a wide bandwidth. It's like 40 and 50, no leakage, it's, that's workable. Okay, this one is the actual vertical output, that one's nice and strong, look at that, 50. Ah, a little bit of leakage there, just a tiny bit. It's probably the strongest one I've seen so far, jeez. It's not going to go into the green. It says in the manual anything about 40 is good. That's probably the strongest one of these we've seen. Okay, this is a 6J5. 6J5 is D1E5 and over 50 is okay. So D1... Isn't this about the most boring thing there is watching someone test tubes? E5. D1 E5. It's like creeping up. It's over 50. Yeah, that's a winner. I don't know why I'm being so methodical on this resurrection. Usually I don't care. I just put power to it. Okay, but we'll take what we get when we do what we do, right? So this is a 6AC7. Seems a little bit on the weak side. No leakage, but... I would imagine, because it doesn't say over 50 okay on this one. That one might be a little bit weak. We'll have to see. I wonder what purpose it serves. Okay, this is a 6BG6 horizontal output. This is the big boy. Let's see what this does. A little bit on the weak side, but it's it's working its way up there. Yeah, it's just it's working its way up there. It'll work. Okay, this is one of the 1B3 uh, high voltage rectifier tubes and I'm I see more high voltage rectifier tubes go to air in these resurrections than just about anything so I you know it doesn't kind of doesn't surprise me that this is completely dead I think I 1B3 A1 A1 and then I'm supposed to take out 3, 4, 5 wait 1, 3, 4, 5, 6, 8 1, 3, 4, 5, 6, 8 let me do that again one three four five six eight. One three four five six eight. Quality. Nobody home. Yeah, it wouldn't surprise me if the if if these uh, high voltage rectifier tubes went to air. It really wouldn't surprise me one bit. I don't even see a getter in that. So that might be. 
done. Okay, here's the other one. Oh, this one's good. Here's the other one, B3. And it does need the cap on it, so it is that this is good. I'm trying very hard not to disturb the dust because I know how much. Ooh, look at that. That's the original Hoffman Easy Vision. So that one is good. This one here appears to be dead. Is that the date? 80? 1980? Were they really using this thing up past 1980? Look at this one's got an EIA code of 274, so this is an RCA bulb. Okay, here's a, another 1B3. This looks like a used one though. 935. Uh, all right, here we go. You see these high voltage rectifiers, they're just like a constant problem in these old TVs. They go to air constantly. Okay, here's another one, and isn't that the getter right down there? Or shouldn't there be a black or silverish thingy there. Let's see this one's probably dead too. Oh, sorry about that. Yep, this one's dead too. Are we gonna have to go with a solid state? Okay, here's another one. Third time's a charm? Not really. kind of dead isn't it okay here's a fourth one this one's marginal six w4 damper tube this is um, usually kind of a pointless tube to test because usually when these Let's all listen to the jackass that's three miles away with the muffler removed off of his car. Trying to wax his ego with a lot of noise. All show and no go. As Anyway, as I was saying, these damper tubes, they when they fail, they usually fail when the thing's operating the high voltage pulses they blow up inside and short out and fall apart okay let's see if we could get this thing to work here in between rainstorm cells um, let's replace this this is a point 22 I got a uh, 224 here let's see if I can make that fit in there Okay, we have our point 22 installed. Now I'm checking the focus pot, which is this pot right here. This is the one that uh, the instructions or the note said would blow open if you ran it with the focus coil disconnected, which I did. But I had a, a bunch of stuff like this fuse over here pulled out and a bunch of other stuff. So I'm checking that and it looks like it did okay. That's closed all the way. It's supposed to be a 1500 ohm. So it looks good. Just kind of set it at uh, 700. We'll set it right in the middle. Uh, this is interesting. This resistor right here is a 100 ohm and this shows that that should be a 400 ohm, so I don't know if that's more of this kind of crappy repairs or what. Okay, here we go. And it has just freaking started raining. Crap.
At least this should kind of tamp the asbestos dust down. All right, let's try this again. I never shy away from a little danger and the rain is let up and the sun is out, but who knows. All right. The fuse there, I've got it out of the circuit and I've got a milliamp meter here. We're going to keep an eye on that. For protection, I have a 300 watt bulb here. If that's too small, I'm going to go to a 500, which this is interesting. These are uh, 500 watt average life, five hours. These are selling for like 50 bucks now, these 500 watt photo bulbs. And put that where it won't get broken. I have high voltage meter here. So I have all the tubes populated as I covered in video one, the 5U4. They're in parallel. I made a 5U4 with some diodes. Oh, well, here we go. We are live. 120. There's something down here that pops and arcs while the thing is warming up. And I'm not really sure what that is. So let's see, I think we're on radio now. That's TV. Our wattage has gone up to 151. And our current is 50 milliamps. That seems kind of low. And we have no high voltage, which is no shock. Okay, that 50 milliamps is flowing through the uh, horizontal output tube. This one feels like it's staying cool. That one's warm. This is, the CRT is not lighting up at all. And I think it's time to give up because it started raining again. But obviously we know we got some problems. The CRT is not illuminating. Uh, there's no vertical and it's starting to pour. Guess I'll just have to try for another day here because this was supposed to be zero rain. Why would the CRT not be lighting up? Gets its um, power there from the same place as all the other tubes. Should we try again in between rain cells now that the workbench is all soaked with water? Previously I made a mistake. I had grabbed the schematic for the chassis 153. This is a 152. I mentioned the 400 ohm. Uh, this is correct. So we just fired it up and it was pretty much dead. We had some current draw on the horizontal output. Unfortunately these older schematics don't give any voltages. So uh, maybe it's in the riders. Well, let's take a look because I didn't hear the vertical, um, the horizontal wasn't working. And actually this thing is glowing. It's just very dim because the bulb is taking quite a bit of the B plus down. But yeah, only 120, 133 watts. Pulling the uh, horizontal oscillator tube out. No change at all. Let's try the vertical. There's just nothing, like there's no voltage. Some of the B plus is missing. Okay, a little bit of good news. We get away from the 300 and go to the 500 watt bulb. And we start to see some high voltage here. We're up to about 6 kilovolts. So that looks good. Now I'm curious, wondering if I should go up to a 1000 watt light bulb. Or if I should just uh, bypass it.
Okay, I'm going to try something here. I'm going to bypass the light bulb and we're going to watch the high voltage. So, some of this stuff is... Okay, the high voltage is going up. 10K. Uh, that's it. We get about 10 kilovolts with the light bulb bypassed. 248 watts with the light bulb bypassed. So. Isn't that cool? I just connected the high voltage to the uh, CRT. Where did that thing go? That's dirt, conductive dirt, because the humidity is like over a hundred percent out here. And there's nothing there. And just as an extra added safety bonus, this entire metal bell is hot. See that? Look at that. I'm not even... I'm a centimeter away and it's picking up the high voltage. See that? Because it is so damp out here. And it's been humid like this for a while. Now, with 10 kilovolts, we should have some type of light on the screen and we have nothing. So let's check our... Uh, that could be... I don't even like getting my hand near this thing. This whole entire metal thing is 10 kilovolts. And with the humidity, it's just arcing everywhere. I'm going to try moving this. I guess this is an ion magnet. I'm going to try moving this around. Okay, I didn't see anything moving this. I've never seen an ion magnet that looked like that. Maybe I should do some reading. Uh, let's check the voltages on the CRT. Well, for one thing, it does. It looks like the thing is not lit again now. So what's going on here? Is the socket bad? Okay, there it is. So yeah, the socket is bad. Oh, look at that. There we go. First signs of life. So I'm going to try moving this ion trap magnet. Let's see. Oh, yeah. There we go. Ooh, party flavor. Wow. I'm moving this, uh, I'm moving this back and forth and rotating it. This, I'm moving this sleeve. It, Oh, there it goes. Bye bye. What happened? Did something just die? Or did the stupid filament go out? No, the filament went out again. What's going on here? Okay, it kind of seems like the vertical wants to do something, but let me see if I can... Oh, okay, there's brightness, so let's turn that down to a minimum. Okay. But this is promising, hey. Okay, well something just died. Boy, is that hot. You hear it? What the hell, now it's working again. Come on, thing, make up your mind. Do you want to work or not? What I wanted to do is I wanted to check some voltages on the... Um, 
vertical output, but I don't want to blow my meter up. This one does not say do not measure like the newer sets, but I still don't think I want to... Well, it's not running, that's for sure. Okay, I'm diagnosing why the vertical's not working, and this is the vertical output transformer right here, and I don't hear the... So what, I've, what I'm doing is I'm starting on the plate which is the blue wire. Let's see, we'll just play follow along here. So we'll start on the plate. And according to this, the plate comes from here. Uh, 260 volts, 1,000 ohm. Then we got a capacitor there. And we're running a negative 100 volts to the uh, cathode here. So 260 volts, 1,000 ohms to red, up to blue. Uh, to pin 5 and 2. So we're going to start right here. This is blue. Okay. So let me get a light. See, that's blue. I know the color rendering is really bad, but that's blue. And on blue we have negative 110 volts. When we should have positive um, probably positive 200 because the positive is coming up through this thousand ohm through the transformer to the plates. If we got negative 100 we're probably getting negative 100 up through the tube. We could prove that by pulling the tube out but let's look for red. I guess you could say this is red right here. So where does that go? Go straight down here to the filter capacitor. Okay. So right there we still have negative 110 volts. Well, transformer's not open. Okay, so this must be our 1000 ohm resistor. Let's go here. Things pretty cool and we have 298 volts gee does anybody think that's open so this resistor right here 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 is open this thousand is open I wonder if we put a thousand there you know, I don't think that filter capacitor, oh, well, it wouldn't mind because you're not backwards biasing the filter capacitor because it's it's already negative 100 here. It's just looping around, so it's equal on both sides. That's why that filter capacitor is isolated. Okay, here's a 1,000 ohm. We're just going to jump it in there live. The thing is powered up, and here we go see what happens here. Nothing happens. Okay, is one of these stupid crappy Chinese test leads open? Of course the crappy Chinese test lead is open. So here we go. Let's try this again. Ooh, there's a spark. Ooh, and vertical deflection. Wow, look at that. Talk about a botched image. And you can hear it now. And who knows how long it's been since this thing did that. Okay, I'm going to tweak the focus. No. Wow, that makes a huge difference. Okay, that's vertical. We're not getting any vertical deflection on the bottom, which could very well be a capacitor's bad. Well, not is a capacitor's bad. Wow, it's actually got snow. Look at that. It's 
actually working. I don't have a speaker hooked up, but it's actually like passing video. Okay, this is getting super, super hot, uh, much hotter than it should. And this capacitor is also getting super hot. So I think we have a shorted cap here. Um, that should not be that hot. Okay, I want to check all these capacitors in the circuit. There's a 0 .05, 0 .1, a 50, uh, and two tens. I want to check all those, try and get the vertical running right, and then we can uh, feed it a signal and see what happens. Those capacitors are these wax capacitors here, and that electrolytic down there. We know we got an open 1K. Uh, it looks kind of corroded and green. I don't think it's as a result of the capacitor being shorted, although I think the capacitor is shorted. Continuing on with our Asbestos Dream Hoffman vintage television set, we need to try and get the vertical working today. And the vertical deflection is always a big majority of the problems with old sets that I see where people just plug them in and turn them on because the vertical is so sensitive to bad capacitors mainly, but also other problems. So we had this open 1K resistor. I think this electrolytic is leaky. Uh, we have two capacitors here. And remember, we're just trying to resurrect this. We're not trying to repair it. It would be really neat to get it to work by this evening. I would love the first thing to come out of this to be the debates where we have a billionaire telling us how billionaires like him need to pay more in taxes. I wrote down the voltages for the vertical oscillator. They were not available for the vertical output. I don't know why they're not in the chart. I guess they don't want you measuring that. I would really like to know what that cathode is supposed to be. But we have one, two, three. I believe we have four electrolytics in this circuit. So we need to go through and check those. And I'm very interested in C152A because that would explain the lack of deflection at the bottom of the screen but yeah any of these and the smaller value ones like the 0 .0047 so I need to find in the 0 .05 and the 0 .1 if any of those were leaky or bad so I might just change these and then we're gonna test these so I need to find the C152A Okay, we're going to use the audio ESR method, so uh, this is that C152, that 50 on the cathode. That's bypassed. That's through the capacitor, it's not open. So, the electrolytics do not seem to be a problem. I'm not seeing anything really bad here. I did replace these two. I just tacked a, a new 0.1 and a new 0.047 in there. Um, but other than that, I'm not seeing the resistors all check really well, actually. It's like all the ones that were out were probably replaced. So I'm just not seeing... Uh, anything that would cause this but vertical circuits are tough the electrolytics are all there um, yeah not many paper capacitors those are the only two really I don't know it looks a bit better but not great it still is only filling probably 40 percent of the screen Okay, so we're going to plug the VG91 into it and just have a look. Okay. Can I electrocute myself? I smell something burning. Well, what happened here? Something break? This thing's all going on with this. 
All right, not a lot of hope right now. The tuner has started coming and going. And even when the tuner was working, I couldn't adjust the horizontal lock to get the uh, horizontal to sink. And when I turn it, you can hear it just starts squealing there when I get to a certain point. But yeah, something, something was up with this tuner and I, it doesn't seem connection related. See, they're starting to work. It's a trip and it just does that randomly and that's when the tuner starts working. But the tuner was working a little bit before the airplane. I could swear I saw some fire right here. I see something sparking right here. Gotta love it. Guess I should have not been a dunce and taken this old resistor out of circuit, huh? Probably right where it went open right there. Arcomatic by Ronco. Okay, I don't know if it's associated, but I cut that damn thing out of there. And you know what, I'm just going to cut this other side out of here, too. Let's get this party going over here. What the hell are we waiting for? So is that what was wrong with the damn tuner? Was that was shorted out to ground? I guess that, there goes the lesson, never just parallel a component, always remove it. Okay, there we go. Wow. Okay, I cannot stop the vertical from rolling. And the horizontal has no effect. Actually, there we go. We're almost there. I just can't get the horizontal to stop rolling. I need to try and tweak this horizontal frequency if I can find it. Holy crap, there we go. Now we just got the vertical deflection on the bottom issue. And once that's corrected, we're watching TV. I love how if you put the screws in too far, they have this designed, so you just lift this little thing up, this little wire, and the screw will fall right out. Well. That's that wire is what holds the threads. 
Okay, I got channel three dialed in now, but look at what the vertical did. The vertical just totally clinko torculated. Look at that. What is going on with this thing? Just more adjustment and that seems halfway decent. It really does. I know it's light out here, but it seems halfway decent. I wish I could center the horizontal. I actually think if I clean this off, it'll get better mileage. Jeez, look at that. What is that? Cigarette glaze? Ooh, cigarette glaze. I'm clean this up. All right, so here's the setup. We've got the screen, the glass, the green glass all cleaned up. We've got our rabbit ears here, our color master engineered for color TV rabbit ears. We got our uh, digital stream converter box on channel 28, which is KCET for the DNC debate. And the chassis is back here. Remember, this is just resurrection. We're just bringing this back to life to torture it a little bit. And just for ultra precision and safety uh, rating, we have the high voltage lead is this green wire clipped onto the CRT. And it's already been sort of tested and it's up and running and ready to be tortured tonight by, well, you'll see when it gets dark. So let's see, what issues did we have that I can remember? Huge issues with this canned ohm resistor. I changed these capacitors. I don't know if I needed to uh, change that capacitor because it was broken. We had an open resistor here. A uh, lot of adjustment and alignment on the tuner. We had a bad uh, high voltage rectifier, which it seems like we always have bad high voltage rectifiers in these resurrections. High failure rate part, and then just the missing tubes. Welcome back. A quick reminder of the rules for this debate. Each candidate has one minute and 15 seconds to answer direct questions from the moderators. And 45 seconds to answer rebuttal and follow-up questions. Tonight's podium order on the stage was determined by an average of recent polls. And let's begin. To the candidates. Last night at this hour, the House of Representatives voted for only the third time in American history to impeach a president. Every one of you was in favor of this action. But unlike 1974 and President Nixon, congressional Democrats have so far not convinced a strong majority of Americans to support. People deserve to see the truth of these administration officials testifying under oath so we can make up our mind. If we want Republican senators to do the right thing, we need their constituents to see the truth on TV and tell them, get rid of this guy or we'll get rid of you. That's what I believe in. I'm a believer in the grassroots as an outsider getting the American 1948 Hoffman resurrected. Well, I thought. didn't do us any favors by missing the reason why Donald Trump became our president in the first place. If you turn on cable network news today, you would think he's our president because of some combination of Russia, racism, Facebook, Hillary Clinton, and emails all mixed together. But Americans around the country know different. We blasted away four million manufacturing jobs that were primarily based in Ohio, Michigan, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, 
Missouri. I just left Iowa. We last at 40,000 main I'm okay with there. whatever's the arcing occasionally. I think it enhances the content here. Trust that we can actually see what's going on in our communities. The AFL-CIO. They say it is going to be a big job creator. Senator, my question so imagine is, coming out of hibernation, and this is the first thing that gets um, shoved down your throat. I'm talking to somebody who, unlike some of my colleagues here, voted against NAFTA, voted against PNCR with China. Two agreements that cost us over four million. The CRT is jobs. in good shape. Now, it's actually really sharp. Your statement that people think this is going to be a great There's job something player. kind of trapezoiding the picture. It's it's kind of clicky twinkler, right but now. it's there. Uh, it would allow, hopefully, Mexican workers to organize into unions, uh, independent unions, and be able to no negotiate decent contracts. But at the end of the day, in my view. It is not going to stop outsourcing. It is not going to stop corporations from moving to Mexico where manufacturing workers make less than $2 an hour. What we need is a trade policy that stands up for workers, stands up for farmers, and by the way, the word climate change... Oh wow, check out the CRT, it's glowing green inside. In new NAFTA agreement at all, which is an outrage. So no, I will not be voting for this agreement. Wow. It makes some modest I've never improvement. seen that before. It's glowing bright green. Let me get a different camera. The markets are booming. Wages, uh, while not growing as much as many would like, they're still This should have better low light sensitivity. A Biden era. My question to you Look at the inside of this CRT. I've never seen a CRT glow that color of green inside. They really like this economy and they don't know why they should make a change. Well, I don't think they really do like the economy. Go back and talk to the old neighbors in the middle class neighborhoods of Oh no, I don't like the economy. Middle class is getting crushed. The working class has no way up as a consequence of that. You have, for example, farmers in the Midwest, 40% of them could pay, couldn't pay their bills last year. You have most Americans, if they received a bill for $400 or more, they'd have to sell something or borrow the money. The middle class is not as behind the eight ball. We have to make sure that they have an even shot. We have to eliminate a significant number of these doubtful tax cuts that were given to the very wealthy. We oh, yeah, that'll in help. Education. We have to invest in and, and, and in healthcare, we have to invest in those things that make a difference. Wow, that's incredible! That green glow. So maintain their standard of living. That's not being done. And the idea that we're growing, we're not growing. The wealthy, very wealthy, are growing. Ordinary people are not growing. They are not happy with where they are, and that's why we must change this presidency now. Mayor Buttigieg, is that your is that your assessment? Yes, where I live, folks aren't measuring the economy by how the Dow Jones is doing. Measuring the economy by how they're doing. When you're doing the bills at the end of the month at your kitchen table, you find that even if your wages have gone up, not nearly going as fast as the cost of health. In the house, this economy is not working for most of us. This is awesome. And I know you're only ever supposed to say middle class and not poor in politics, but you got to talk about poverty this time. There is not a county in the United States of America where someone working full time at the minimum wage can afford a two bedroom apartment. In places, not even a one bedroom apartment. The biggest problem in our economy is simple people are not getting paid enough. That is not the result of some mysterious cosmic force. It's the result of bad policy, and we've got to change it by raising wages and empowering workers. That's cool. Mr. Yang, Mr. Yang. GDP and profits are at record highs in America today. Also at record highs, depression, financial insecurity, student loan debt, even suicides and drug overdoses. It has gotten so bad that our life expectancy as a country has declined for the last three years because suicides and drug overdoses. Farmer will transfer the Kanafa tray onto the stub over there and then he will rotate that tray over an open flame to allow the Kanafa to cook through. CRT seems like it's in really good shape. Except for that green. That green right there is the mercury vapor light.
But that green inside the CRT. Our final stop is Bonita's favorite baklava shop, where we have Hartman coffee and baklava. That is awesome. If you like unique street food experiences and theme park, you want the last exit to your... 500,000 Americans, including 30,000 veterans, are sleeping out on the streets. Today in America, we have the highest rate of childhood poverty of almost any major country on earth. More income and wealth inequality since, Vertical, than since the 1980s. We need an economy that works for working families, not just the 1%. That is what our campaign is about. Senator Warren, there I have a goes. question for you. Every candidate on the stage has proposed tax increases on the wealthy, <clears throat> but you have especially ambitious plans that apart from health care, would hike taxes an additional eight trillion dollars over the decade. The biggest tax increase in, since World War II. There you go. How do you answer top nope. economists who say taxes of this magnitude would stifle growth and investment? Oh, they're just wrong. Oh, absolutely. Let's start with the wealth tax. The idea of a two cent tax on the great fortunes in this country, $50 million and above. For two cents, what can we do? We can invest in the rest of America. We can provide universal child care, early childhood education for every baby in this country age zero to five. Sounds universal legit. Universal pre-K for every three-year-old and four-year-old and raise the wages of every child care worker and preschool teacher. We can do even more for our public schools, for college graduates. We can cancel student loan debt. But think about the economic impact of that. You leave two cents with the billionaires, they're not eating more pizzas. They're not buying more cars. We invest that 2% in early childhood education and child care. That means those babies get top-notch care. It means their mamas can finish their education. It means their mamas and their daddies can take on... And it means their baby daddy go on the Steve Wilco now. show. We can increase productivity in this country, and we can start building this economy from the ground up. That's how we build it in small towns. That's Very. how we build it in rural America. And that's how we build it in urban America. Like an economy that works brief answers. Not for Wall Street, but that works for Main Brief Street. responses from Mr. Steyer and Mr. Buttigieg. So let me say that I agree with Senator Warren in much of what she says. Where is well Bloomberg? For a year. I'm in favor of where the Bloomberg the at? rich people and big corporations that this administration has put through. And in addition, I've talked about equilibrating the taxes on passive investment, which would allow us to cut taxes for 95 percent of Americans by 10 percent. But there's something else going on that I think is really important, and that's this. We know Mr. Trump's going to run on the economy and take him down on the economy and expose him as a fraud and a failure. Oh, yeah. And I think that's different from Notice the people on this Notice the state. vertical is growing as it runs. It's completely filled out the bottom now, and it's president. working on filling we out the top. The Mayor. It's acrylabrating. Candidate in American history and beat her. Mayor Buttigieg. We're also being, right now, I think we're being offered a false choice. You either have to go all the way to the extreme or it's business as usual. Yes, we must deliver big ideas. And yes, taxes on wealthy individuals and on corporations are going to have to go up. We can also be smart about... So there it is, resurrected. 1948 Hoffman Easy Vision Combo Stereo Console whatever. Uh, cat tray. Soon to be cat tray. It's too bad. I... It'd be neat if I could find someone who could adopt, who would adopt it and give it the love that it needs and really restore it. But man, that would be a lot of work and trying to adopt these sets out now has gotten to be more effort than it's worth. It really is.
but we brought it back to life and um, that green glow inside the CRT that's pretty interesting I don't know if that means there's air or if that's just something to do with the focus magnet but it's all there it's all working and uh, it definitely needs to be completely restored uh, and it's a great foundation to work from you know it's it's everything's good the flyback the power transformer it just needs to be totally recapped aligned all of that stuff and yes the first thing that came belching out of it after sitting dormant for who knows how long is the uh, yeah if you're watching this and you really want this set and want to adopt it and fix it up hit me up I need to find a good home for it very soon or else it's going in the recycle there's a lot of people asking me for parts off of it especially the power transformer I would really not rather not deal with all that parting it out uh, it's a lot of headache for little return but if I could find a home for the whole thing because like I say it's all there well it's not quite all there the knobs are missing but it's a restorable candidate Okay, let's take a look at the thermal profile of the Hoffman with the new FLIR camera. So we can see most of the heat is uh, the power resistors, of course. They're hot. This one sitting right here that's cold, that's the 1,000 ohm um, vertical one that was open. So that right there, that's the horizontal linearity coil right there. That's the horizontal linearity coil. It's pretty warm. Let's see what else we got here that's hot. More resistors. The operation is not very smooth. What is this? Sometimes it's hard to see where I'm at. That is a resistor that's hot. That right there, that's a resistor. Some of these could be reflections also. That's a tube socket that's hot. That's that 100 ohm focus resistor. Wow, that sucker is hot. That's the filter choke. More resistors that are hot. Okay, let's see what tubes are the hottest. Should be able to adjust this. I don't know if I can. So obviously the audio output tube is super hot. Let me do this. Okay, I set the temperature up real high. So the audio output tube right there is the hottest. Then one of these tuner tubes is really hot. Wow. Let's see what else is super hot. The vertical output tube is super hot. And the metal tube right next to it is super hot. Let's look in the high voltage cage. And you can see the damper and horizontal output tubes are super hot. So this can be very helpful.
it's kind of uh, slow but that could be the phone if we take a look at the hottest very hottest things in the back it would be that 100 ohm resistor on the focus and then the can dome and the two replacements for the can dome those are the highest temperature highest power sources back here